There are a lot of moving parts to launching and producing a podcast. Lots you need to think about, not just about putting the content together and recording it and editing, but about how you present your show. And last week on The Profitable Podcaster, I shared with you my seven-point framework for podcast growth. I also shared with you that I am offering podcast audits where I apply that framework and give you objective and honest feedback on how you can grow your show. And today I'm excited to bring you one of those audits. Will from The Lovable Survivor has snatched up one of the early bird price audits and he has been gracious enough to let me share it with you here on The Profitable Podcaster. Now, Will had a stroke at 37 years old and decided to start a podcast where he is a survivor talking to other survivors because there's not a lot of information out there uh, for people who have a stroke at such an early age. And so I think that this is such an interesting show. I'm really grateful that will let me share this audit with you. Now, if you prefer listening to podcasts or you just want these episodes delivered directly to your podcast player every week, you can head over to ProfitablePodcaster.fm. I'll put a link in the description. I put out 20 minute or less episodes every week on how you can grow and monetize your podcast. That's the Profitable Podcaster. But for now, enjoy the video, enjoy this audit. And uh, if you want to see more of these, let me know in the comments below or grab your own podcast audit over at podcastliftoff.com slash audit. Hey, Will, I hope you're doing well. I have the audit ready for you. Uh, so I just wanted to walk through some of these things. I have Apple Podcasts up on the screen. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to kind of give you my initial reaction thoughts and, and what I'm thinking as I put all of this stuff together. So uh, first of all, it's um, you have a really good start. Uh, four episodes plus the trailer in is really good. I like the general branding and the color scheme the name of the show is really good there are a few things i think we can really improve here so the first thing is um uh you are in most directories which is good you're not on youtube i think that's the number one place that you need to be and when we get to like your action items we'll definitely talk about that um iHeartRadio is another good place to be because iHeartRadio is a really popular podcast brand in general um so you you definitely want to make sure you're there um, and then CastBox, Pandora, Spreaker, and Stitcher. These all have pretty clear uh, submission um, submission instructions. I'll include those in the report when I send them. These are just links to the directories now so you can kind of see all the sites. Um, but you're in most of the major ones. I think if you need to pick one, it's got to be YouTube. Uh, over a third of American adults discover podcasts on YouTube. And so you being there will increase your chance of discoverability. Okay, uh, so now let's uh, review uh, title, description, and artwork. Uh, I think the number one thing that you should do is remove podcast from the name. That is implicit in the title of the podcast or in, in the fact that it is a podcast. So the lovable survivor. And then I would take it one step further Um if it's not just going to be about you, I saw you write someplace that maybe you'll do interviews. Uh, if it's mostly focused on your journey, I think the lovable survivor is great. If it's going to be you and other people and you're building a community around here, and actually I didn't even type these thoughts out yet. Uh, I was just really excited to <laughs> record the video. Um, uh, but I will type some of these thoughts out for making money uh, after I walk through this but if you are going to build community around this um you might want to make it lovable survivors so that's if you're going to highlight other survivors i think that's the the thing to do but if it's mostly your story and your advice and your research then the lovable survivor is good um your description, I think, is the place where you can use uh, the most improvement here. Um, you want your description to read more like a movie synopsis than a, an about page, which is how it and as a, as a matter of fact, I first saw it on your about page. Um, and let's go back to Apple Podcasts here. I first saw this on your about page. And I thought this is a really good about page. Um, and then I also saw it right here. So so if you haven't looked at your podcast in Apple Podcasts yet, I would strongly recommend you do that. Apple Podcasts and Spotify, just to see what users see 
when they are scrolling the directory, right? Um, and so what they're going to see here is what's up, everybody. I'm Will, a.k.a. The Lovable Survivor. So picture this. You probably have lost people um, because, again, this is very conversational. It's a long block of text. Um, if I were to um, write this description, I would want to hook somebody immediately. So maybe I would say something like, imagine having a stroke and then being diagnosed with MS right before the start of a global pandemic. Boom. Now you have their attention. And then later on, um, maybe the next sentence, again, this should be like three or four sentences, right? Enough to get people interested. Um, but then you you go on to say, um, I want to share my struggles, successes with you. So you can finesse this text a little bit, distill it into two or three or four sentences and say, uh, again, something like, imagine being diagnosed with a, or imagine having a stroke and then being diagnosed with MS right before the start of a global pandemic. That's me. And I started this podcast because I know that there are not a lot of survivors telling their story. And I want you, I want to tell my story. I don't have all the answers, but I've spent the last three years researching and experimenting to find out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and then you end with, so let's do this together and build a community of resilient survivors looking to take back control of their lives. That's how you include the audience. So I think you can distill the description there. Um, hook them, tell them what the show is about, and then have that call to action that, hey, this is for all of us. And I think you can get a lot more listeners that way. Because um, right now this just kind of sounds like like w what you would say um again this is a, a good about page but we want more of like a movie synopsis um moving on to well we'll get to the episodes in a minute the artwork i actually really like the artwork i love the branding and the colors like i said what i would do is put less text on this because again people are scrolling they're not going to read all of it uh so i might like make your avatar a little bigger um and then navigating second chances I think that should be the big text, right? You can get rid of a podcast hosted by survivors for survivors. You can put that in the tag in the description if you want. Um, I think that would be a good place uh, for that. Um, but like navigating second chances, I think is the thing that will get people to uh, stop scrolling and be like second chances. What, what, what is he surviving? Right? Cause that now you open that, that loop that um that feedback loop that curiosity loop so i would say that maybe make the title a little bit bigger and then navigating second chances keep or get rid of the waveform again i think like that's fine i think people are, people will know it's a podcast so you don't really need it but it adds a little extra element to it um so th that's my advice i'm not a designer but i know like you know when people are scrolling looking for podcasts they're definitely not going to read the struggles, successes, science, navigating second chances the way it's written there, right? They're going to see lovable survivor. Maybe they'll see your face. Maybe they'll see a podcast hosted by, but they're probably going to scroll after that, right? Whereas if you make the title bigger, you make your avatar a little bit bigger. Um, and then you say like navigating second chances, like that's, that's going to be the thing that hooks people, I think. Um, so with that, let's talk about episodes uh, titles and descriptions, right? So again, this is what people are going to see. So um, it looks like Apple Podcasts will like do the two lines for the title. So people will see that. Spotify and other directories might not. So it, it might get cut off. Your goal here for these episode titles is to optimize for search, right? And so um, episode space dash number space episode space dash space number space dash space takes up a lot of room in that and in some i share a screenshot in the report but in pocket cast and other uh, directories they'll include the episode number already so it's it's going to be redundant it's going to take up space what you want is again you want to open that feedback loop you want to hook somebody so um you know i might call episode one uh, what it's like having a stroke at 37, right? Because that's going to hook somebody. Most people who have strokes are not 37. They're older than 37. So th this is the thing that I would want to try to do as you um, 
title your episodes, right? So, uh, again, what it's like having a stroke at 37, um, you know, managing, I mean, managing the initial wave of overwhelm, I think that's really good, right? Like, oh, wow, this, yeah, this guy had a stroke and has MS. That's a lot to process all in, in one time. Um, and so that's the kind of stuff that you want to uh, think about when you're doing the titles. Same thing with the descriptions. Um, this episode, in this episode, you can get rid of that, right? The in this episode part is implicit. Um, and, you know, I did the same thing. You know, the first, the first like 100 episodes I had in this episode – uh, the first 100 episodes are just like episode one, Jason Coleman or whoever I interviewed. Um, and so this is stuff that I've learned. But again, this is going to be scannable. People are seeing just a few sentences. And so in this episode, um, especially like in this episode of the Lovable Survivor, po that's taking up almost an entire line of text, right? Where you want to hook the listener. Um, so that's what I would recommend for your descriptions. Luckily, like all of this is changeable now. Like nothing's permanent. You can change these and the feeds will automatically update and it'll be great. So that's what I recommend you do for the titles and descriptions of the episodes. Uh, again, here's that screenshot, right? So you see S1, E3 um, right next to episode three, right? And uh, it looks like, you know, some of this, uh, it looks like nothing's getting cut off here, which is good. But um, again, you, you want to make sure that it doesn't get cut off in other episodes or in other um, directories. All right, we're coming up on time here. I want to try to keep this less than 15 minutes. <laughs> um, your call to action doesn't sound like you have one. Um, so you definitely want to have one, right? Uh, I, in the beginning, uh, we'll, we'll get this, to this in your intro, but even if it's not your newsletter right now, ask them for ratings or reviews. Ask them to share with a friend. Uh, send them to the current website if you want and, and ask for feedback there. But uh, follow you on Twitter. I, I noticed that you have your Twitter profile, uh, your tweets on the page, right? You want the, the listeners to take some action. I also noticed that I think you're using Buzzsprout, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and if you are using Buzzsprout, great. Uh, they have something called dynamic content. So you can add a pre-roll call to action and then change it when you and then change it for every episode when you do have a website ready. So that's what I would recommend. Um, you mentioned like maybe a newsletter. Definitely do the newsletter. And make that your call to action. Um, but you want something super clear and super obvious because podcasting for many is a multitasking activity. And so when you only have their attention for a little bit or you don't have their full attention, you want your intentions to be clear. Um, okay, so uh, critique your intro. Your intro music's too long. I think it was like 20 seconds. We have 60 to 90 seconds to hook the listener when they start listening. Uh, so I would start with a cold open, right? You mentioned that you're probably going to start doing outlines. I think that's really smart. I can also get off topic, as you probably noticed here. Um, but I would uh, absolutely like three bullet points to say right off the bat before the intro music. Um, hey, everybody, I want to tell you uh, the stories of my biggest struggles. I want to tell you how at 400 pounds I fell out of a wheelchair and what that meant for my recovery, right? What fell out of a wheelchair? Like that, when I listened to that part of your episode, that shocked me. So um, put that right in the beginning, and that means I'm going to keep listening, right? Um, I would also, there's your intro music uh, is a little loud when you're talking, right? There's something, I don't know what you're using to edit, um, but most editing software will have something called ducking, which will or auto ducking, which will automatically lower the volume of the music when you start talking. Um, so this is I, like Audacity has this, Descript has this, um, ScreenFlow has this. I don't know if GarageBand. I don't think GarageBand has it, so you'd have to lower the vo volume manually. But you want to look into auto ducking because, especially with your outro, um, which I just ended up listening to the whole episode um, with your outro. Uh, I, I can't even hear you at the end, right? And so you want to make sure that the music is is ducking. And then finally, 12 minutes in, you said, okay, let's get to the first topic. I think an outline is going to help with this, right? Um, you want to make sure that you get to uh, what you promise you're going to talk about in the title and description, because again, we have those 90 seconds to hook the listener. Uh, I have some, I have five podcasts for you to swap with. Uh, I need to fill in this part, recommended strategies for helping you earn money. 
sponsorships obviously a good way to go um as you gain listeners like you mentioned right i think you're uniquely positioned i found the same when i was researching podcasts to swap with there's not a lot of survivors telling their own stories and so what i recommend right is if you're mentioning something that's helped you with your recovery whether that is uh like an online learning site a medical journal or some useful tool reach out to those brands and say hey i'm a survivor i talk about how much your product has helped me would you like to sponsor my podcast would you like to support somebody who's putting out the word um for uh for survivors um the other thing that you could do is lean into this community right so i'm thinking like this could be um a free premium model i don't know what you're thinking about this is a kind of longer play but if you have a community right then in that community you can offer maybe only paying members can comment on your episodes um or maybe they get ad free extended versions maybe they get behind the scenes stuff so i think that there's an opportunity there um okay wrapping up uh there are some resources here for finding podcast swaps and this is my making money smash framework um, if you want to go through that exercise and, and maybe you'll come up with a better answer than me, um, based on your goals and your future things that I couldn't glean from doing the audit, uh, but your main actions to take. So here are the five things that I think you need to do next in the order in which I think you should do them. Update your title and description, update your episode titles based on the advice I gave you, uh, make your intro a cold open and call to action. Again, this is moving forward. Um, you can add the call to action using dynamic content if you're using Buzzsprout, which I think you are. Um, excuse me. Update your artwork and get your podcast on YouTube. I wrote that last. That's going up here. Um, I think that's going to be really important. So that's it, Will. Thanks so much for purchasing the Podcast Growth Audit. I hope this helps. And if you have any follow-up questions, let me know. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed watching that audit. If you want to see more of these, let me know in the comments below. Definitely like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you want your own audit, you can head over to podcastliftoff.com slash audit. There is still a discount off of the full price. So I will be happy to provide one of these for you. Who knows? I can also share it on the YouTube channel if you want. But again, if you want to see more of these, leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching this video. And until next time, I can't wait to see what you make.